nice and thick. Ba cha, ba ba cha. Beating. Bad, 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 bad. Terrible. This is gonna be a different version of Wonderwall. What's up, guys? It has been a long, long, long time since I have sat in the seat and sat down here and done one of these production videos. I mean, a lot of things have happened in that time. I've released an original single, a cover single. I've played my first live show ever. I've played my second live show ever. I've grown a mustache and I now have a family with three kids. Only some of that is true and I hope you know which is true and which is not. Anyway, just recently I released a cover of Wonderwall. Now doing this cover was an idea that came out of doing my live set. I had a couple of covers in there, but I really wanted to have that really popular cover that everybody knew to get everyone to the front, everyone dancing and everyone singing along. And I guess the obvious pick was just to do Wonderwall. I mean, Oasis was getting back together. Uh, Wonderwall is like one of the most popular songs of all time. I haven't met a person that doesn't know Wonderwall. And it holds like a special place in my heart for me. I genuinely think it was like the first song I ever learnt on the guitar. To just throw my own spin on Wonderwall, I mean, I knew it was gonna be a whole lot of fun. So plan for the video is... There is no plan. We're just gonna go through the project file. We're gonna look at the guitars, we're gonna look at the bass, we're gonna look at the drums, we're gonna look at those spicy vocals, and we are just gonna have a good look at how I made my cover of Wonderwall. So I'm gonna stop wasting time. Let's just get straight into the video. So here we have it, here is the full Wonderwall cover project file. So as you can see, a whole lot of different colors going on here. Basically I like to color code all my instruments, so take each different color as a different instrument or element to the track. So I thought the obvious place to start would be the guitars because the guitars are sort of like the foundational element of the track. So I believe every guitar on this track was recorded on my Fender Telecaster. I've just got this running through my Boss Katana amp, throw a distortion plug in and then straight into my FL Studio. So as you can see, that is nice and nice and crunchy there. So tuning wise for this, it's a bit of a alternative tuning, open tuning. So we've got C sharp, G sharp, B, F sharp, B, and then an E flat. So let's first take a look at this Lion Green guitar. It's sort of what I'm calling the foundational guitar. So that's just basically playing this little intro riff. It's just the opening chords. As you can hear, I've just recorded this in and it's panned slightly to the left just to give a bit of space to the mix. Bit of reverb, bit of OTT, bit of EQing. Quite a lot of EQing to be honest. That's just opening up the song, going along with the vocal. That basically opens the song up and it says, to anybody that's listening, this is gonna be a different version of Wonderwall. You ain't never heard this shit before, man. Moving through the verse, the chords basically stay the same and this riff can basically remain riffing in the same way. So going into this first verse. And your heart is out. I'm sure you've heard it all before but so the only real variation is this guitar becomes like a sort of riff counter melody and that's playing in the chorus Baby, you're gonna be the one that's And as you can see in the chorus, I've just doubled that up, but it is still panned half to the left. So it's sort of got one counter melody sitting on the left side. And then as you'll see shortly, there's another one panned on the right, just to create like a big, like open stereo wall of guitars. So naturally let's just jump to this counter melody that is in the pink. And as you can see here, it's panned half to the right. So that guitar kicks in when things just get a little bit louder, when the drums kick in um, and we've just finished that intro section. 
That guitar basically works in harmony with that left-sided guitar, that intro guitar. It's just sitting on the right, as I said, creating that big open space. And bad beat, the word is on the street, that the fire in your heart is out. So again, when we get to the chorus, that guitar is gonna have a little bit of variation on it again. We're gonna double it up like we did with the first guitar on the left. This one is gonna be 50% pan to the right. And again, it's just playing a high energy counter melody. Paired with that first guitar. Yes, is that we've got two different guitars that are playing two sort of counter melodies against each other but at the same time they're like an important piece in the puzzle just working together to make the song sound big and huge and energetic now there is one last guitar that is basically holding everything together and that is this like chunky middle rhythm guitar and it's basically sitting there doubled up in a left and right pan um, playing the chords playing the the root chords <laughs> So in this section it's actually like a muted guitar so it's playing a little like this. Again, a little bit of reverb, some OTT, and some EQing. Now these three guitars together, they are, as I said, working in harmony to just provide that big wall of guitars sound. of course going into the chorus it is going to open up and just provide us with a whole heap of energy spend a little bit of time looking at this bass guitar because we need a bit of low end thickness to this mix. So basically with this bass I just wanted to do a simple follow the root note of the song basically with a few flares here and there but nothing too outrageous so if we listen to what the bass is doing in this verse section it's just super simple just following that root note yeah it's a chunk so a bit of a mixing tip on bass, I like to get a little bit of grit out of my bass on the recording. So you can hear that bass is nice and thick. A little bit of mid on there and a little bit of high. It also helps that I play with a pick and that just gives it a nice bit of... Just... And then when I throw it into its own mixing channel, um, I've got a limiter which is acting as a compressor and this is smashing it, absolutely smashing it. It is just getting beaten, just beaten. And I do that because I want that bass to be nice and thick. I just want it to be just a nice, thick, juicy, turd of a bass basically just sausage turd whatever you want to call it just make that bass thick all right now we need to get a bit of rhythm on this track because we're throwing down the guitars and the bass but there's nothing holding the song together it's just a absolute shambles at this stage and what do we need for that we need a drum kit so as always i'm running my trusty Easy Drummer number three. Basically, I've just got a whole lot of different loops going on, different fills going on in the song. So in this verse section, we've got like 
toms going on, like the toms are driving the beat of the song. And this pre-chorus, we sort of drive it with the hi-hat, take the toms out and just get a little bit of forward momentum going. Energy starts to pick up a little. So now as we move into the chorus, of course we're gonna get super hype, we're gonna get super loud, we're gonna get those cymbals absolutely smashing their brains out. So for this chorus, I've sort of like half-timed it, I think. We go from this sort of pre-chorus where it's like, ba-cha, ba-ba-cha, ba-cha, ba-ba-cha. Really like driving forward, punching forward, pa 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 energy real high. And we go into this chorus and we just slow it down. We just like, we sort of like vibe out a little. You know, just. Super nice, just super nice contrast. Ba cha, ba ba cha, ba cha, ba, ba cha, pra ba ba cha, ba cha, pra ba ba cha. I hope my freaking acapella is making sense to you. It's making sense in my head. Hope it's making sense in your head. So this is a perfect little example here of how the drums control everything in the song. We go from, as I was saying, ba cha ba ba cha, real fast driving forward, and then we hit this little fill. And we go half time. See? Into the chorus. This is half time. Cha, ra pa ba cha, ba ba cha. The best way I can describe it is in that first little bit, we're sprinting, we're running, we're running, we're trying to catch something, we're trying to catch something, it is right there, and then that little fill hits, and that's when we catch it. It's like catching a freaking football, right? We're running, running, it's over, catch. And then we got it, and then it's like, hell yeah, we're coasting it, touchdown, freaking win the Super Bowl, Taylor Swift, all that shit, you know. But I woke up. Right, last but absolutely not least, it is the vocal. Um, it wouldn't be Wonderwall if it didn't have the vocal. Fact. So basically, I'll give you a crash course on my vocal process. Um, it is... God, is it a mess. These are all like different takes. So basically I do like four or five takes per line or like section of a verse or a chorus. As you can see, I just snip out the best like phrases of those takes and then I stitch them all together into a final vocal run it through a bit of tuning and then basically then I have my my final vocal take Today was gonna be the day that they're gonna throw back Use that to you By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do So that sounded a little bit off and that's probably why I didn't use it in the final take Because <laughs> the, the the good take was good I promise but essentially, once I've completed that process, then we've got a lead vox tuned, and it sounds good, hopefully. To tell you the truth, vocals for me is shit, 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 bad, 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 terrible, shit, shit, bad, 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 and then good magically becomes good. I don't know how to explain it. It just works like that. Every single song I've worked on where I've put a vocal in, it's just it's just bad 90% of the time until it's not and then it works. I've got no like real process that works. I just chuck a DSR on it to take out the s sounds pretty limited to just catch those tops in a compression. A um, bit of room reverb just to make it like a little bit wide and um, have a bit of character to it and then like smash it with compression. See that thrill seeker is like really just like squashing it together and then of course EQing. I don't feel like I need to overproduce my vocals too much like I could add like five, six, ten layers of different vocals on there to like really make it big and huge but most of the time i find that a lead vox a double and then some harmonies in there is sufficient so basically that's how the vocals work throughout the song in different moments i'm bringing in the double in different moments i am bringing in the harmonies um, for example the second verse we've got harmonies and doubles going on Today, 
now my absolute favorite part of the song is the outro where we combine the chorus vocals with all the harmonies and all that good stuff going on with the verse vocal and it's just like the most perfect contrast of i said maybe with today it's gonna be the day and it is just oh, it is just sauce I said Okay guys, apologies. I've just realized that my camera is completely dead and there's really no point booting it back up for this silly little outro section. So anyway, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you in some way, any way, one way, no ways. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting me on my musical journey and until next time, have a great, great day. Today was gonna be the day that they're gonna throw back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. That beat, the word is on the street, that the fire in your heart is out.